Hey, it's Lee with Experience Lights. And if you can tell by the corner of the screen, what we're going to be looking at is getting a talking skull working with the Pixel to Servos board in X Lights and also talking about some sequencing, how you can use an existing lyric track with the servos effect and also the state effect to make some very easy mouth movements. So let's dive right in. Uh, in X Lights on our controllers tab, I've got a FPP based controller set up with full X Lights control. It's a K8. And we'll go over into the layout and start putting in some models. The first thing I like to do is to set up a servo model just to give us a visual representation of what the servo itself is doing. So we're going to draw that out here. And for this purpose, we're going to use just a regular 8 bit servo. So we'll uncheck that 16 bit box, take it down to one channel. And really what that does is um, the 16-bit option gives you finer control over the servo, and we don't really need that for this jaw motion. It doesn't have a really, um, you know, it's not going to be super sensitive to position. We're going to get plenty of motion, uh, range of motion out of it with just the regular 8-bit, so we'll turn that off. And we'll go here and set a couple other settings. In this servo drop-down, we've got the minimum and maximum ranges, and I know from testing with this thing that if I send this servo all the way up to DMX value 255, the jaw is going to extend too far and it's actually going to run into that little block of wood that it's sitting on. So I'll take this down to a maximum limit of 170. This range of motion here, that is just for the visual representation in the um, visualizer here in the layout. It doesn't affect how it actually works on the skull, but to make it as accurate as possible, we'll set that down to 90 degrees. And this servo style, we're going to switch that to rotation along the z-axis because we want to see this thing spin around here as soon as we drop the image on there. Um, the x-axis is left and right, y is up and down, and the z is the in and out. So since we want to rotate it around that z-axis, um, that's what we select. And these pivot uh, offset points, those will come in handy here in just a second once we add an image. We could add a static image on here, but really I just want to see the, um, the horn itself rotate. So we're going to drop that in here in the motion image. So I'm going to select an image that I had downloaded for a little servo horn. There we go. Now that we've got the image in there, there is a pink dot in the center of the image. That is indicating the center of rotation on the image and it's in the center of the image right now which is not where it actually rotates from. It rotates around this big hole up here at the top. So that's where we go back to that pivot offset. We'll move that over. Move that over to the right with the X offset and then we're gonna move it up with the Y offset. Get it good and centered in that hole there so that when it animates it looks correct. Okay. Now the last thing we can do is I know that this servo when it is at rest is going kind of horizontally like this but the image that I found um, had it going at an angle so to make it as accurate as possible I can actually rotate that image and it looks like it needs to go um, oh about a quarter of the way and then another eighth so 135 degrees. That looks good. That's the way it looks when it's at rest. I'm going to connect it up here to the controller. The controller's name is FPP. It is on port 1, and we should be good to go. So really, that's all we need to start sequencing it, but I'll also show how we can set up the skull model so that we can see the actual jaw open and close. It's kind of fun. Um, we'll drop that in here. Now, the skull model has a couple of um, quirks with it when you're sequencing in 2D. Um, I like to sequence in 2D, so I, um, you know, I'll, I'll change all this stuff to make it look correct in the preview. But by default, all of these different ranges uh, have been set for us for the pan, the tilt, the nod, the eyes, orientation, the jaw, etc. So if we go over into the sequencer, it looks all funny. It doesn't look like it does here in the layout. That's because it's trying to render it all in 3D, and um, I'm, I'm not going to be using 3D, so we can, uh, yeah, 
we can go fix all this stuff here in the layout. If there's an easier way to do this, um, anybody that's worked with the skull model, maybe let me know, but this is how I have figured out how to do it. So I have to set the, um, the limits here. We'll set this to 250, range of motion 250. And this is not going to be rotating. This is going to be translating in the Y for the jaw. The pan servo is going to be minimum of zero. The tilt is also going to have a minimum of zero. The nod has a minimum of zero. The eyes, a minimum of zero. Zero. Zero, 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 zero. All right, I think that should be good. Yeah, so now if we go back into the sequencer, it looks it looks reasonable. Okay. So now we have our two models set. Um, oh, I also need to link this one up to the correct channel. So since this is basically um, going to do the same thing as the, the servo itself, I'm just going to connect it here um, at the start of the DMX servo model, so it's going to use the same channel here. Um, channel 1 is going to be the start channel. And this servo, uh, this skull model rather, it doesn't have all of these features. We only have the jaw servo, but if you unclick all of these, then you don't have these uh, drop downs here to be able to move the stuff around and it won't look correct in the, um, in the sequencer. So we've got to leave them on there just so that we're able to reset those settings. So now that we've got it all set up, we can start sequencing something. So I'm going to make a new sequence. We're going to do a musical sequence here. And I've got, um, you make it feel like Christmas. Select the audio here. There we go. 40 frames per second. Quick start. All right. So the first thing that I want to do is show how we can um, use the existing lyric track and the servo effect to make this thing move. So we're going to do a import effects on our file here. You make it feel like Christmas. And all we want is really all of these timing tracks. So uh, I don't need the polyphonic transcription, but I'll take everything else. Yeah, Blake Glenn, and we don't need backup singers. Actually, for this purpose, I'm just going to use Blake. All right. So we've got all of the vocals for Blake here. All right, so he, that's where he starts talking. So we'll just go ahead and take the servo model, or servo effect rather, and place it on the servo model, drag it out there, and uncheck this 16-bit here, servo one, and we're gonna say use timing track, Blake. And that's all it takes. You can see the servo is moving. And my skull model is not configured correctly. So let's go see if we can fix that. So the jaw servo, oh yes, um, range of motion. It's gonna be a negative number and it's moving way too far because I've got it zoomed in. So uh, since it's gonna be going down when the, um, um, when the servo is extended or gets a higher value, we need to make that a, uh, a negative number. Okay. There we go. That's a little better, and it's still a little bit more than we need, so let's take that down to like negative 20 something. All right. I wanna thank the storm. Yeah, so we're getting there. Let's move that around just a little bit so that we don't crowd our view too much. Okay. I wanna thank the storm that brought the snow and thanks to the string of lights that make it glow. But I 
and that's as easy as it gets. Um, one thing I will say, if you can see his jawbone here, how it's uh, when it's when the effect is not playing, so we're we're beyond the effect right here. Um, the jaw is still down. That's because when the effect is not sending anything when it's sending a zero basically that is going to tell the servo to just stop at whatever position it currently was in um, to get it to actually close all the way we need to send it um, the dmx value of, of one or the smallest value that you can have without basically doing nothing so what i like to do for that is put in another layer and then just drop in a uh, DMX effect here with a value of 1. And what that will do, uh, the other thing we need to do is set this to layered. Yes. So basically, it will, once this effect is done, um, if there's nothing being sent from the effect below, so if the servo effect is not sending anything, then the DMX effect on top will be sending it the one. So it will basically keep it from um, keep it from sticking in its last position. So that's that's as easy as it gets for using a lyric track and making your servos move. Another thing that you can play with here, uh, if we watch the motion. See how his jaw is moving a lot, like it's kind of exaggerated. You can use the brightness adjustment on the servo effect itself to kind of tone down that range of motion. So see, now it's not quite so exaggerated. That's pretty cool. Um, other thing I will mention is there's a little bit of a delay on the camera that's on the skull. It's actually not delayed in real life, but this camera is connected wirelessly, so it's got a little bit of a lag. So that's how we can do it with the, uh, with the servo model, and if that is good enough for you, if you like how all of that looks, that's great. There is one more kind of um, uh, maybe more advanced or more in-depth way of doing it with the states model if you want to select... Um, a particular range. So the way that the the servo effect is working is it is looking at um, the the phoneme breakdowns here and picking a servo position. So it's looking at at these phonemes right here, the U, W, Q, E, T, C, E, etc., and using a pre-programmed position for each one of those phonemes. Now. That may work for you, that may not. If you want to change what those positions are for each of those phonemes, you can use the state effect with your own, um, with your own states. So we'll go into that and see how that looks. So the states are defined in the model itself. So we're gonna go into the DMX servo model, click into the states here, and we're going to make a new group of states. We're gonna call this, um, uh, position servo positions and what we're gonna do is we're going to name each state the same name of the phoneme because the way the state effect will work is it will look for the information that's in the timing track and try to match it with that state number and then pick the um, uh, pick the appropriate value so in here, we're going to put the state names as the phonemes, which are A, I, E, E, T, C, F, V, L, M, B, P, O, REST, U, and W, Q. All right. And then for the nodes, we're just going to select servo 1, because that's what we've got. Servo 1. Okay, and then we're going to uh, 
click this box here for force custom colors. Basically what that's going to do is allow us to set the channel intensity for um, for that particular state. So whenever whenever the um, timing mark matches the state name here, it's going to set this node to this particular color or range. So the AI, um, I don't have my chart handy, but I'm just going to show you how how you can set these things up. So the AI, that's like a big, that's a big mouth open. We're going to set that to a hundred percent basically. We're going to set that to white. The E is going to be smaller. Uh, we'll set that like down here. The ETC, that's going to be like all the way closed. The FV, that's going to be a little bit open. So we want like a gray. The L, it's going to be a little bit open. Let's pick something in here. MVP, that's going to be like all the way closed. The O, that's going to be a bit open. I'm just making this stuff up. You can play with this however you want. Rest is going to be all the way closed. U is going to be a bit open. And then WQ is going to be a bit more open than U, I think. U, yeah. U, no, I got that backwards. U is going to be more like this. WQ is going to be a little more closed. Yeah. And again, you can fine tune all this stuff. I'm just making this up on the fly. Okay, so we've got those states defined now for our servo. Now, instead of using the servo effect, we will use the state effect. And I'm going to use the same um, DMX effect on that layer above so that when we're not sending something, it will default to that one value um, and keep the servo all the way closed. But now we're going to use the, uh, the state effect over here. So we'll drop the state effect on our servo model. And our state definition is going to be servo positions. And oh yeah, timing track. That, this is where the fun part happens. So we want this state effect to match the phonemes. We want it to match the names of the phonemes that we have here in the phone and breakdown. Well, whoops, zoomed in too far. We can't just pick that from the timing track because it's not its own timing track, it's a layer here in this breakdown. But what we can do is we can copy this row and then make a new timing track. We'll call this uh, Blake, Blake Servo. And now, we can paste that row in there. So now we've pasted just the phonemes, um, you know, not the phrases, not the words, but down to the phonemes, we've pasted that as a new timing track. So now the state effect, we can select that Blake Servo um, timing track here and do the same thing that we had. And so now, if we don't like the mouth position of a particular phoneme, instead of being stuck with what we've got with the servo effect, we can modify it ourselves with the state effect, just by going back in to that state and changing those values. So two different ways to accomplish the same goal, uh, and then that trick there with the, uh, with the DMX effect at the one to get the mouth to close back all the way when you're all done. Um, with the effect. So hope that was useful for somebody. Uh, I thought it was a lot of fun uh, for getting it figured out today and, and getting it hooked up with this with this talking skull. I'm really excited to see what people can do with adding more animation and interactivity to their shows. So uh, thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, hit me up on Facebook. I'd be happy to happy to help you.